Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Resin. Today we got a fun experiment. We found this awesome little adapter card to add a graphics card to any laptop, mini PC, or even computer if you wanted to. All you need is an NVMe slot that is open and you can use this adapter with a power supply, any graphics card of your choice, to add a graphics card to a PC that probably doesn't have one already. How well does it actually work? Well, we're about to find out, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Tonar and their USB mic kit featuring their TC40 USB cardioid mic, a high quality mic arm and pop filter, making it an all around awesome starter kit for streaming and other content creation. Here's a quick mic test. This sound is recorded on the Toner TC40 USB microphone using their patented mic holder that's actually spring actuated all inside of the Toner mic holder and pop filter. For the price, this setup is hard to beat. Pick up the Tonar USB mic kit today by clicking the link in the description down below. And special thanks again to Tonar for sponsoring today's video. So this actual component here cost about 70 bucks and we'll have links in the description down below so that you can go check it out. But it's really cool actually because you can use any standard old 24 pin power supply or you can buy a special DC adapter that's not as bulky as a whole power supply. And then you can plug this into any NVMe slot, whether it's a mini PC, a laptop, maybe a computer that's low profile or a slim tower so you can't fit a full size card or a card at all. And you wanna add something like this and look at that, it even can support external power, which a lot of those PCs don't have. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is talk about this little setup we have going here, give a big shout out to Pixio for this monitor, and then dive into exactly how this works and what kind of GPUs you can ideally use this sort of configuration with. All right guys, you might be a little bit confused because you saw a different GPU here when we did the intro, but we had to do an audible after doing some benchmarking. This is an RX 480 4 gig. I keep wanting to call it a 580. It's a 484 gig, which is a pretty decent card. It's very expensive on the scalper market right now, but it works really well. I'm going to go ahead and explain how this whole setup is working. For the mini PC, we're using a 5500U mini PC from Morphine, which we did review on the channel. Hit the eye on the top right corner to check that video out. Comes with 16 gigs of RAM and that six core 12 threaded processor. Now how this little R3G, which I believe is from like, a, I don't remember the brand name. I'm not going to force it here, but what it is, is a little GPU enclosure. It allows you to install a normal GPU 16X slot right there. And all you have to do is take a power supply like this one right here, plug it in with the 24 pin, and then it includes two cables so you can break off to the GPU that requires an eight pin or two eight pins or eight six pin, whatever configuration your graphics card goes with, it'll actually run that. This right here is like a 200 watt unit, which 200 watts is probably your best option. Or you could go with a Dell where there's this little single connector and that was what we were originally gonna go with, but what happened was it got lost in shipping. So you know what, we went with the normal power supply. Then all you gotta do is plug this all together, put this little NVMe um, adapter into the open NVMe slot. It has to be NVMe, by the way, for this to work. And then plug in the video out to the graphics card and to your monitor, and you're good to go. The power of this PC will turn everything on. You don't need to jump the power supply or anything. So um, yeah, this whole setup works really well. This RX 480 is going to be a good option because it's not super high end and also is going to be significantly better than the Vega graphics on the 5500U, but we won't know that until we do some testing. So let's just do that. So for this this monitor, Pixio is nice enough to send over this Pixio PX275CP, and it is a 27 inch, 1440p, 100 hertz, one millisecond response time display that is absolutely beautiful and crystal clear. I mean, just look at that zero bezel frame and everything. Awesome stand, which it looks like you can actually do some. You can do some moving and a little bit of moving. Adjusting. I think so. A little bit of that. A little, can we do, oh, up and down? Oh. Yeah, we got it all. Now, can it do any of this? Whoa. Oh, I can. Whoa. Just like that. That's how we're going to game. Just like that. That's how we're going to game. But yeah, we wanted to just use a really nice monitor for this just so we didn't have any like bottlenecking. You know, we didn't want the image to look bad or anything. So obviously we're running this bad boy. I think, are we doing 1080p? We're doing this? 1080p. Yeah, we're doing so. 1080p because this is a lower end graphics card. And really we just wanted to show off some Pixio products for you guys. And also Deep Cool was nice enough to send over this beautiful keyboard with these nice red switches. Nice 65% and you know, we're using a nice Corsair mouse, which we always use this bad boy. So I think that's pretty much it. I think it's time to download some games and test them. All right, guys, the first game we're going to be testing is Fortnite, and we are running this RX 480 on old school performance mode. We actually tested the 5500U. We are running, we were running performance mode uh, instead of running DirectX 11, but we're just testing this on the Epic View distance, everything else on low, because that normally gives you the best performance nowadays on systems with dedicated graphics cards, from my experience. So we're going to go ahead and drop in and see what we can get. On average, at 80% render scale at 1080p, which isn't technically 1080p, with 
the mini PC without the graphics card, we were only getting, give or take, about 60 to 70 FPS. So we're gonna see what we get when we land here and see if it's comparable. Um, it does take a little bit to fully load everything in once we finish dropping in, but that RX 480 should be more than adequate to get better frame rates overall in a game like Fortnite. Even though this is more CPU dependent, we will be testing other games like Apex that are more GPU bound, um, where we can actually really stretch that RX 480's legs. And of course you could go with a better GPU, but do keep in mind, you are gonna lose like five or so percent performance just by using this little NVMe adapter. And as you can see right here, we're already getting 100 plus FPS, which is far better than what we were getting running at 80% render scale on performance mode, which is supposed to give you more performance. So maybe even running performance mode would give you overall a better experience, but I see a guy right here that has no weapon and is clearly a bot. All right, Ice Fork, you're done, dude. You're done. But we're definitely gonna be testing a game like Warzone. That is the one I'm most interested to see because the 5500U would not work at all for Warzone. Yeah, technically you can run really, really low resolution and get a somewhat playable experience, but it's just not gonna run AAA titles. And that's where you pick up like a RX 480 or something along those lines. And I'm gonna kill that guy. Nope, didn't kill him. He's almost dead though. So along those lines, and you should be able to get a more playable experience on a mini PC that wasn't necessarily designed for gaming, even though the six cores and 12 threads that it has is very adequate for gaming. Oh, here we go. We're under attack. I don't have enough ammo. Whoop. Oh, he bought me in the head, jeez. Couldn't kill him. But hey, as you can tell, the frame rate was pretty awesome. I'm gonna have McAllister put a little bit of footage right here to show you what the previous gameplay looked like. So you can compare a little bit to what we had with just the Vega graphics on the 5500U. But overall, this is looking pretty good. Let's try a game that's more GPU dependent that we actually had to run at 720p to get a 60 FPS experience. And that is Apex Legends. Let's bring Jackson in here. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. But yeah, we're testing Apex Legends. As I mentioned before, when we tested this on the integrated graphics of the 5500U, we had to run 720p low settings. But right now, it's looking like we're going to hit that frame rate cap of 144 on the same low settings, but at 1080p. So it's going to look pretty good. Pretty good for gaming with the 480. Almost called a 580. It's a 480. All right, guys, so just to show you guys the settings real quick, we're on full screen 1080p, FOV all the way up, and then we have everything set to low except for the texture streaming budget because we do have four gigs of VRAM. But I mean, look at that. We're getting like 100 and, 120 to 140 FPS. It'll probably drop a little bit once we get out, but I think we're going to go here. I think we're going to go right here. I can't ping. ping middle ping, mouse, middle mouse. Ping. Space jump. Now, can Jackson hit his snipes? Probably not. That's dude. the real question. Here. I thought I was going to be like better, but I think it's the mouse, dude. I think if I get a lightweight mouse. Do we need a lightweight mouse for benchmarking? I think we do. For all Oh, dude, this, our guy Weebs is absolutely destroying. Part of the bean squad. We're right here, right here, right here. Ping get him. Do him. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, easy, easy. Yeah, guys, the 480 is a pretty sensible option for something like this. They still go for what, like over $200 right now on eBay, like two to 250. Yeah, yeah, the 480s are, they're still expensive because of mining, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're a really good mining card for cheap, but one thing we will tell you is like 460s and 470s, because they only have like two gigs of VRAM for the most part, those are still really cheap, like around 100 to 120, so. That could be a cheap option. Yeah, well, we'll probably, you know what, let's just link some options down below. Yeah, we'll leave all the links, all the links that you could ever want. Oh, there we go. Why does it have so many shots? Oh, oh my no. god! Oh my god! Oh my so god! So many bullets! Why are people keep calling me? Oh, see, you're you're, you're a new gamer now. You're Dude, a new I'm gamer warming now. Up. New gamer. Oh god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Teammates! Oh, I couldn't they punch. I was pinging. Day. I was pinging ping, instead ping, of punching. Ping. I'm like, ah. Oh. But hey, you're the champion, and Apex Legends runs really well on this little setup. It's not bad. Yeah, let's go. And hey, if you ever get to play with Weebs, highly recommend him as a teammate. They do help. Very you good. Out. Very good. Just like Zach. All right, good. One. All right, guys, the next game we're gonna be testing is Warzone, which would not run at all on this PC before. And we are running a 1080p pretty much low settings. I'll go ahead and show you the graphics real quick. Um, low settings here, we are running at full res scale though. So you got that going for us. Let's lower some of this stuff. This is 
not needed to be that high and actually probably get some better results here. But uh, yeah, we're getting 60 FPS. Well, close to 60 FPS. The RX 480 four gig is not great for Warzone because Warzone really likes having more than four gigs of VRAM, ideally eight. Um, so an eight gig probably would be better for a game like Warzone, but we're still getting 60 FPS or close to 60 FPS. Um, and that should work out pretty well for us. We'll wait till we actually dive into the main game to know for sure, but so far, so good. All right, guys, we are ready to dive into Warzone. As you can see right now, we're using a crap ton of RAM, 13 gigs. Warzone, man, really takes up a lot of RAM. So the more RAM you can put in this thing, the better. But 16 gigs is definitely a minimum for a really good gaming experience in Warzone nowadays. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive in and see if we can maintain close to 60 FPS. Normally in the drop-off spot in most Battle Royale games, you are going to be over, well, under 60 FPS. But um, yeah, it looks like it's settling out really nicely. So we're going to drop to this hot drop here. See if we get some kills and... Uh, give you all some good gameplay with this external GPU setup, which I'll be totally honest, I had my doubts. I thought this was gonna be a very janky solution that wouldn't work very well, but it's very plug and play. Um, any sort of power supply will work. That Dell one is definitely the easiest option. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, we lost it in shipping. Oh, but yes, if you wanted to go with that Dell power supply, you definitely have a cleaner looking setup overall. Got him. That guy was not ready for me. But yeah, look, 60 FPS, that GPU is at 100%, so we're getting good usage. We are losing a little bit of performance from, from running this uh, PCI adapter compared to running it in like a normal system, but I thought Jackson's use case was kind of interesting where you could, in a uh, older PC, well, actually it wouldn't be that old, it needs to be NVMe. Um, oh, come here, buddy. Oh, he just peeked around the corner and shot me. But what I was gonna say as I'm getting sent to the gulag is you could, on systems where you can't install a full-size GPU, run one of these bad boys on, let's say, like a proprietary um, like Dell or HP or something like that that's a slim tower and run this off an extra NVMe slot and you could have a GPU that way if you just have absolutely no option to be able to get a uh, full system. So that's kind of a cool use case that would work for something like this adapter. But um, yeah, I'm actually very impressed with this thing overall. All right, we're going. We're gonna. We're gonna win these. Wow, wow, that was that was kind of embarrassing for that guy. But yeah, guys, I would definitely say Warzone is playable on this setup. That 5500U with six cores and 12 threads is more than capable of handling this kind of GPU and something better if you really wanted to go with something higher end. I probably wouldn't go much higher than like a 2060, 3060 level card or a 6600 XT, because um, after that, you're just, it, it's kind of ridiculous at that point. But um, yeah, external GPU, it works pretty well. Um, instead of me running around here for a long time trying to find somebody, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this video up real quick. Oh, there was somebody! Ah! I actually killed somebody. Kalser probably cut this part because he saw me say it's over, but you know what? I'm gonna go back in the review notes and tell him that he needs to add that. I killed him. Look at that, guys. I did it. All right, now let's drop this video up real quick. Okay, guys, so after just a little bit of trial and error, you know, we originally had a GTX 760 in here, which was really not too bad. I mean, it's a $100 card, obviously a lot cheaper than something like this nice 480, but we we're having issues with the drivers really not supporting new games properly. In Apex Legends, it was actually worse than running the Vega graphics, but in other games, it actually did pretty well. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, if you go really old graphics card, then it might not be the most playable, but obviously if you're going with like an RX series card, you're gonna be perfectly fine. And overall, it did really do well. I mean, it, we were able to play games that we couldn't play at all before. And in games like Apex and Fortnite and Warzone, it did add quite a bit of FPS to them. So, I mean, does this make sense? I think depending on the use case, it really could make a lot of sense for the right kind of person. If you're someone who likes to tinker with stuff and maybe wants to make like an external GPU enclosure box or something like this, you could easily make something to make this look a lot cleaner. Cause right now it's kind of a mess. It just looks like an open test bench that we would do here just for testing and then take it apart. But you could make this a clean solution if you are trying to make a permanent desk setup from a mini PC. So, so if you want to pick any of this stuff up, links in the description down below will be affiliate links and it does help us out. I'll try to leave as many GPU suggestions as I think makes sense for this mini PC down below as well, along with all the stuff you need to get up and running. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Does this whole setup look scary to you? Well, we have the ultimate solution for you to get up and gaming. PCBros.tech is our PC selling business. We sell actual gaming PCs, actual gaming laptops, and actual mini PCs that can do a little bit of gaming. So if you want to pick any of this stuff up, check out our website or come in person. PCBros.tech. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.